when I talk about Devin Haney and give him credit for being very talented, it never fails somebody wants to disagree, and that's fine. Talent obviously means natural ability, right? Natural skill. Um, how about athleticism? There's there's quite a bit of overlap between talent and athleticism, not to say they're one and the same. But Devin Haney is a very talented guy, okay? He's just not well-schooled. And he's only 21 years old or 22. Oh, man. I wish he'd keep his mouth shut. And I, I get it. You know, I understand. He's trying to make money and, and all that. And yeah, but I'm going to just tell the truth anyway. What's that got to do with what I'm doing, right? He, um... Yeah, he just needs time. He needs to be built up properly, and it's going to be a problem. If Devin Haney develops properly, uh, he's going to be a problem. So give the kid his credit. Just because he talks a whole bunch of shit he can't back up right now, don't got the balls, don't got the experience. I mean, the kid would probably do it, but, you know, he's got a good father around him, so... They're going to be straight, but, you know, uh, for me, as an old cunt, I would like him better if he kept his mouth shut, but, you know, credit where credit is due. So, you know, him fighting Gamboa, obviously, it was just a very good fight for him, very good developmental fight. You know, Gamboa in his prime, fighting guys his size, his natural size, because Gamboa's fucking inflated, man. He had a growth spurt in his 30s. <laughs> what else? Do we, ooh, let's, yeah, let's not waste any more time than we have to. Um, but, you know, when Gamboa had his natural body and he was in his prime physically, he could move. All that weight he put on NH, that slowed him down so much, logically. And it wrecked his stamina, too. So, for Devin, from what I understand, Okay. in himself to make the weight. El City Salido. Right? We talked about his physique and how he's got these little baby arms. Yeah. He's still building his strength, okay? He's still growing. But that dude's going to be a welterweight. Easy. <laughs> Easy. That's going to be, I think that's going to be his prime if he's developed properly and, and we get to see uh, him develop. But, you know, the whole thing about him being the missing piece to the... I wouldn't put him in there with Teofimo Lopez right now, but Bob Arum's not going to do that because Teo's moving up, so whatever. Maybe they could fight at some point down the line. It could it could be a big, big fight in like two, three years. So let's hope for that. Teofimo's a good-ass fighter too, man. Young and experienced still. But, uh, yeah, Loma whooped his ass. Ain't no doubt about that.
And but besides the fact that Haney's still growing, he doesn't punch correctly. Right? He's working on his punch technique. And it's one big problem I see that uh he needs to work on and fix. Andre has that same problem. Um Billy Joe Saunders has a little bit of that problem. There's a few fighters. Oh, Tyson Fury. They're just a bunch of limp wrist motherfuckers, man. Their their wrists are just weak. And when their fists make impact, the wrists give way. So punch technique. Damn. Gamboa was fucking quick, man. And look at his footwork when he did that to uh, Salido. Boom. Beautiful. Yeah, this Gamboa would have... If you were... If he could hurt Haney, he would have stopped him, this Gamboa. I think, I think he would have stopped Haney if they fought, right? Yeah. Does anybody else find it interesting how Gamboa gets in the ring with a much bigger man than Tank? Yeah, he's still a kid, and well, so is Tank, kind of young. But, and just sucks. Like, this wasn't prime Gamboa, but for some odd reason, uh, Haney fought a much better version of Gamboa than Tank fought, and his shoes weren't falling apart. I don't know if I've ever seen a fight where shoes don't fall apart. Well, to be honest, I've seen a couple, and they always shady. The, the My shoe fell apart trick, right? Yeah. Can you imagine, like, what brand shoe was he wearing? Because right now he's got Asics or something? Or is it Adidas? I don't know. Asics. You could completely wreck the company's uh, good name, right? Whatever the fuck he was wearing. And if he wasn't wearing any other major brand names, then was that in his contract or something? Like, You know what I mean? Oh, we provide your shoes and your gloves. You're too good. But yeah, he came to fight against Haney. And looked to have better stamina. Which just, didn't, well, didn't have a fucking ankle injury out of nowhere let's let's just leave it at that right and Pedraza and um, Leo Santa Cruz for some reason want to fight the fucking puncher right are they really that dumb I doubt it so yeah but Haney still managed to hurt Gumbo a few times and he slowed him down and help, yeah, affect his stamina, helped affect his stamina. Damn, look at how fast Gumboa was back in the in and out. Fast punching combinations. For Salido to not get, um, did he eventually get, no, he didn't get knocked out, did he? If he did, it was late. I don't remember. I don't think he did. He got knocked down. I remember that. Back to his low blowing. Gamboa did the right thing right there. Just walked him back, right? Pushed him off balance so he couldn't throw any more punches. Very, um... Man, these Cubans are... They're well-schooled. They're good fighters. They just... They seem chinny, man. And that... That wrecks them. If Rigondiao and Gamboa weren't chinny, I mean... Imagine how much beast, more beastly they would be, right? They could walk through some of these punches and hit you like Golovkin did um, Gil. Anyway. Yeah. It was a very good fight tonight. Gamboa versus Haney. You know, I wanted to see the fight. I wasn't hating on the fight. I thought it would have been a good fight. But, um... It was just it hyped up as more than what it was. It was just Devin Haney was basically going to school, but it was a pretty safe lesson for the most part. He had to be on his P's and Q's, but, you know, Gamboa's damn near 40, and he doesn't move like this anymore. You see that? 
Yeah, this Gamboa would have beaten Haney, but they would have never put Haney in a ring with someone like this, right? Because they know what they're doing with the kid, and, you know, credit to him and props to him and all the best to him, but I got to tell you what it is. And at this stage in time, the hype isn't even warranted. And he's not no champion. You gotta earn that shit. Look at that foot movement, man. And then punches at all times, right? Gamboa was a badass. Man. The defense, even though he fought with his hands down, he rolled that punch. And he knew how to hide when he was stunned. Like right there, Gamboa was stunned a little bit. But he recovered pretty quickly and went back to work. Huh. I don't know how many rounds you could have given to Gamboa in that fight, but it doesn't matter. It wasn't going to be that kind of fight. Gamboa knew he had one chance, and that's to knock out, catch Haney with something. And he tried, but he just wasn't big enough. And Haney was very slippery and elusive in there and always moving. So it's, even if you land something, you know, if they're not walking into the shot, they're, they're, they're definitely walking um, away or out of the shot, right? So just, just by staying on your feet, even if you fight with your hands down, um, it's a form of defense too. The, the odds of you uh, not getting hit are better than 50-50, basically. So that's where defense st starts for me. When you start limiting your opponent to every other, less than every other shot landed. That's when I could say you got good defense. Some kind of defense. Yeah. If you wanted to give Haney every single round in that fight, I wouldn't have a problem with that. But I think Gamboa maybe took... I'm pretty sure he took one, but maybe two. Can you imagine Haney dealing with something like this? Now, maybe, maybe he would have caught him on the way in, right? But Gamboa wasn't going to start doing anything like that till he caught and thought he hurt you first. Then he would unload, right? He wouldn't just run in like that. Gamboa was a sniper, ambush fighter, puncher. I mean, he could do it all. Boom. Yeah, Devin Haney's going to be a lot better after this fight because unlike in the tank fight, Gamboa came to win, basically. If you, if you can't tell that a whole bunch of PBC fights are $3 bills, just like straight up, wrinkly, don't know where they've been, $3 bills, then, you know, it's probably not the channel for you. Yeah. Haney's talented, man. Don't trip. The reason why he sucked in, sucked in uh, Santiago, Santiago was it? Whatever that dude's name was, fight, was because, yeah, dude was big and tall, and uh, he had an injury, apparently. And, yeah, he, he didn't look right in that fight. So I believe the injury story. Something was wrong with him, whatever it was, but I believe the shoulder injury because he's got bad punch technique, right? He's got to sharpen up, tighten up his punches, throw him correctly, and he's going to, you know, and, you know, put some meat on them fucking bones. He's got these big ass bones and these tiny little muscles, man. Yeah, he he's a little fragile right now, so it is what it is. But, you know, it was a good performance by a developing, very talented uh, prospect with the trinket. Um, see, Gamboa right there was hurt by Salido, but you went into recovery mode, right? 
and fall back a little bit, but not with the same kind of tenacity. Uh, Salido. But unlike in the Loma fight, um, the ref was grabbing Salido in this fight, not Lomachenko. Crazy. Oh, that's what I wanted to talk about. <sighs> the referee in that fight, as long as, as well as uh, Sergio Mora and um, whatever the white guy's name is, uh, they needed to be taken outside and spanked. Um, yeah, terrible performance by all of them, and we'll just leave it at that. Well, I'll say a little bit more. Uh, he was protecting Devin Haney like he was his daddy or something, but or. Yeah, I don't know. He was a little bit too loving when it came to Devin and didn't give a shit about Yuri Yorkis. But that's the way the cookie crumbles, man. That's the way the cookie crumbles. We're going we're gonna to add uh, Yuri Yorkis Gamboa to the Mama Luke's because he was one of the baddest, that's for sure. Yeah, a little fragile, a little chinny. But, I mean, when he fought guys... His size, his natural size, and I think Salido is bigger right there. Um, he whooped their ass, man. He whooped their ass. It is what it is. And he, anytime Gamboa fought anybody, he always outperformed other people that fought the same fighter. But, but like, he didn't just outperform like an up and coming dude. He would outperform Juan Manuel Marquez or he would outperform, um, all his peers, when he fought Matagua, the way he handled that guy, as opposed to how, um, what's the Puerto Rican boy's name, Wanma, did, I mean, yeah, in this prime, in his natural weight class, Gamboa was uh, the brightest shining light in those, in those lower weight divisions for like two, three years, yeah, badass. Mama Luke from Cuba. A lot more exciting than his some of his compatriots, right? Fun to watch. But his time is, you know, over and even Haney, um whatever. It's, I guess it's the takeover. How about that? It's the takeover. But it was a good fight. It was a good performance by Haney. And Gamboa, too, considering his age and everything. Yeah, Gamboa came to win this fucking fight. And he knew what he had to do. He couldn't just brawl this much bigger guy. But um, he looked at him. He looked at him. He studied him. And, and he fought back and, and tried to win rounds. But wasn't really overexerting himself early. And then in the middle rounds, he tried to knock him out. But, you know, Haney took the shot, so props to him. And his defense was, you know, was on point. Because Gamboa was sniping in there. If only for like three, maybe four rounds, he was in there trying to do that. So, And that that's all he got at this age against this much, uh, naturally much bigger even though he's a kid, you know, man. So it was what it was. And it wasn't no, you know, great fight or, or significant fight or anything like that. But it was a very good developmental fight for a prospect. A very, very highly talented prospect with the trinket who's also very much protected by the establishment, unlike someone like Gamboa or any of the other Mamalukes. Thanks for watching.